Facebook didn't exist, would there have been a revolution? Yes, I think so. The organization of the revolution would have been different. But, uh, of course, I mean, there had been revolutions before, and uh, I think we can't reduce the, the, the whole impact uh, of, uh, on this means, on this tool. Okay. So, did or does the government control every kind of media? Uh, they tried to. They, they tried to close down the internet and uh, even uh, Al Jazeera. They didn't manage finally. Uh, and um, of course, also the the state media media in Egypt, for example, even changed during the revolution because they saw that uh, the public just fled because nobody believed them anymore, which was a problem before already. So, how important was the internet and all? slash social networks? I think uh, it, is, uh, it, it shouldn't be underestimated because of the possibility of, uh, for example, uh, informing ourselves about other countries. That's what the Arabs did too, of course. But uh, if we ask ourselves how much we use from the media or the impressions of other countries, or even stick to the media we used to, the internet is not that um, uh, transnational means that it could be. It's not used like that. But uh, of course here, on the, for example, in, in Egypt to organize this central date, uh, the youth uh, to, 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 to call for the, um, the day uh, on the 25th of January, this was especially organized on the Facebook page. Yeah. And certainly by SMS, micromedia, yeah. and uh, also email and things like that. But we shouldn't underestimate neither. In these countries, there is a certain, so, there is a social census, uh, censorship yeah. that means that not uh, that it's very expensive to have access to the internet, yeah. much more than here. Yeah, that's true. So, um, could they stop people from using social networks? I don't, don't think so, but I think what would be done, what is more clever today, is uh, to divert the attention. Yes. This is what happens also to us, that you have uh, social networks or you have um, uh, 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 groups. For example, in Stuttgart here we had this case, that uh, some organization was invented, which has a web page, to be for the project, for the S21 project, which was finally a sort of astroturfing, where uh, the uh, uh, PR manager who was uh, always engaged from the city, he invented this platform to, to show or to, to make the impression that there is an NGO for this project. And so we can't be sure if, if they are about the manipulation. Either. So what is, what is Algeria's role in the revolution? Sorry? What's, what is the role, Alger, Algeria's role in the revolution? Yeah, I think Al Jazeera's role was very important. Uh, I think with this uh, revolution, you can say, like Stern did, uh, Stern uh, showed that the winner is Al Jazeera. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm not sure if the, the um, situation in Tahrir Place in Egypt would have stayed like is that calm if Al Jazeera wouldn't have documented every step and everything what had happened so that we can saw, see that there was prov uh, uh, provocation, that the people tried to keep calm, to keep a good, uh, ask for democracy but not turning to violence and the role of the military. That was very important and uh, having the feeling that you are under public view of the world, I think it or I hope it would have given the people the hope that they will manage without turning to violent actions, things like that. And uh, I think Al Jazeera won on the other side because it's perhaps the first time, not the first time, but the most important time where they got known throughout the whole world. Okay. Uh, yeah. Everyone, or many people, millions of people. Broadcast, yeah, yeah they, they saw Al Jazeera English life, yeah. which is different from Al Jazeera Arabic. You must know. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. Um, do all European media get the same information? No. <laughs> um, the, uh, here you see a difference. For example, if you compare here in the school, Germany and France, yeah. you see the, the old structures of colonialism, for example, that yes. France is still uh, having more access to different countries that are in closer relationships yes. and get more information. Instead, here in, Ger in Germany, we are disclosed in a certain way from these. Uh, so, so there are different ways of uh, 
news transmission and correspondence, etc. So uh, there is different um, well, making yeah. of the news. Mm -hmm. So how do you explain the difference between German and French re reactions? Do they have the same sources? Or yeah, different? they don't have the same sources and they don't have the same interests. So yeah. I think, of yeah. course, there are changes. Mm -hmm. So how can we actually know uh, what is really happening there, although the local media are all corrupted? That's a very good question. I mean, even Al Jazeera, of course, has its perspectives, a point of view, yeah. interests where it's showing uh, pictures of a side not. So um, this is really a, a problem, and it's a problem everywhere, not yes, here. Yes, okay. It's good to become aware of that, that uh, we only get a small, a very small part of what is mm -hmm. happening with an interpretation. And if this interpretation is right, we don't know. If the aspects we get to know are really the relevant one, yes. ones, we don't get to know. So it's very good if you have different sources and you can count to check. And uh, I mean, the internet provides good possibilities, for example, with the Project Yemen or uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, websites, different things. Uh, but uh, on the other side, you have a new problem here that is to, to evaluate and to judge the information you get then. Yeah. Because um, I mean, this can, can be, yeah. that's it, exactly. Everyone mm -hmm. can write what he wants. And so, um, this is not clear about the, uh, the quality neither. Okay, so um, how's, the, how's the revolution showed in the local media? I mean, Tunisia, for instance, and Sidi Bouzid, if there is a local... Of course, first of all, we had this, uh, this state media, which yes. is uh, conformist, which yes. is not... Uh, so uh, there, the revolution, the media revolution in the Arab countries took place place in the mid of the uh, 1990s when Al Jazeera was founded right. because it was beside not uh, broadcasting about Qatar yeah. which is funding Al Jazeera yeah. and being a bit perhaps very nice to Saudi Arabia yes. all the other countries and, and stories are covered and uh, so they cut for the first time the, the power of the state controlled media in all the countries and um, uh, so there was always Al Arabia later then, and then uh, um, for some years now Al Jazeera English. Yes. Um, so uh, I think, uh, yeah, you, you saw perhaps the media, uh, the, 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 the advantage, let's call it advantage, in a dictatorship, is you know that your media is manipulating. Yes. So perhaps uh, in comparison to the so called free countries and freedom of the press, which is really something very good and important, but yeah. you must be aware that there is manipulation too. Yeah, there is manipulation. Mm -hmm. um, how is it possible for television channels like Al Jazeera to exist in a dictatorship area? Yeah. I don't know what is the role of the Sheikh of Qatar who is uh, financing the whole thing. Yes. Uh, I don't know. Um, um, yeah. Um, they are, I have the impression, um, they are um, if from from the quality of the of the mm. programs. I mean, there are programs of very high quality, of low quality, and uh, it's a sort of a, a, an Arab perspective, at mm. least Arab Al Jazeera Arab. Mm. Uh, uh, so it is. If you take, for example, CNN, mm. which is American uh, yeah. United States for perspective. So if you compare or um, uh, uh, complete, you can complete the picture and see different perspectives. But yeah. of course, yeah. But I mean. Uh, Al Jazeera, I think, is more open to more perspectives because uh, it's not um, those countries who, for example, appreciate the, the, the Western cultures. Yeah. Uh, they they are more open to more perspectives. Okay. So, do you think that the journalists risk their lives just to inform us when they go to a war, an area where there's war or? I mean, this is not possible, a journalist who says so, they want to do so, but it's always a certain perspective. Yeah. But I mean, you must see, it's Al Jazeera journalists that are very much often killed. Yes. Now, during the revolution, they were taken in prison in, in, Egypt, in Egypt, in Iraq, the Al Jazeera office was bombed. So, they risk a lot to show the pictures of the Arab perspective. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, they are important for us because they are very often omitted, left out in our media, yeah. so that we see the uh, things happen without the humans being touched by yeah. the, okay. the problems. And so I think it's a, um, it's like every journalism is, is there is no objective uh, 
subjective is there is always a certain subjectivism in it. Yep. So I got to know that. Yep. So what do you think? Uh, what do the Germans think of France getting involved in Libya? I mean, I'm not sure if I can say what the Germans no, think. No, no, I, mean, I think they don't think what the government says. <laughs> I have the impression, but uh, even this. Um, uh, if you see your media coverage about the media discourse, um, um, there is a, a sort of a polarization. Let's only take the peace movement as, as an example mm -hmm. in Germany, mm -hmm. because I have some uh, in, uh, uh, access and I see myself as part of it. Yeah. So. Um, the peace movement was polarized by this question because some said, oh, this is really an awful dictator, we have to do something, he's yes. fighting his people. And the other said, but remember, this is the argumentation we had during the war in the Balkans, during yeah. Iraq, etc. Saddam Hussein turned to be a dictator, we had to free his people, see what happened. So this is the same war among the rhetoric, yeah. and we have to be against any war, there is no just war. Yeah. So we have this polarization, and I think this polarization, even in the peace movement is also there in the in the country. Yes. In countries where the media is censored, um, um, in which countries were the media censored about this revolution? Since we saw that in China where the China I mean, when there was problems to it, they just censored the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And you know others other countries where they did that as well. Well, uh, first of all, for the Tibet uh, things, uh, if, uh, we have to, to take into account Michel Coulomb, yes. who did very good research about this, because, um, yeah, this trying to close down, especially, I mean, in China, they, the Google question, the thing, what do they find or do they not, uh, there is a, a try a censorship, which we have could observe in Tunisia and Egypt also. I mean, it's easy to, to go around these barriers, but uh, uh, people have to know technically on, on that way. Um, I don't know if censorship is a very successful means because if you know there is censorship, you have less confidence in your government. Yes. On the other side, I really think that the problem we have to face today as uh, more even journalists go into public relations, um, that we have to face more um, influence of discourses and. Uh, um, let's say more news, irrelevant new news, yes, yes. to divert our attention away from what is really relevant. Right. Yes. So, um, what kind of media are involved in such a revolution? So, uh, you mean as a support of the yes. of the demonstrators, of the yes. manifestators? Uh, yeah, we call, it, we call it mi micromedia. Yeah. Um, uh, micromedia is everything that is not under a powerful control, yeah. which is starting with your mobile, with, uh, yeah, with um, SMS uh, uh, or e email and uh, Twitter. Um, so uh, I think this is something, as it is tried, as it has been tried to turn down, yeah. uh, it shows that it is estimated by the government yeah. as important. And we are not sure because everyone is leaving his um, his data there. You can do profiling with it. After the revolution, now you can do profiling about the people. So uh, it is um, a means, uh, but it can be controlled or at least used to by other side. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you.